Let's do it. Hello, everybody, and welcome. I am so glad you're here and joining us for this great bird brain webinar and class that we're going to do together where we are going to build some tiny drummer characters together. So my name is Kelsey Derringer, and I am the professional development coordinator for bird brain technologies, which means that I usually teach teachers coding and robotics and making and creativity. But uh, because of where we all find ourselves right now, I also get to teach students and parents now as well. We're going to have some of you guys introduce yourselves in a second, but I also want to introduce Matt. Hi, Matt. Hi, how you doing? I'm doing great. Um, how are you doing? I'm doing very well. I am excited to answer some questions from our Facebook viewers. Yeah, so if you are here on Zoom, there's a couple different ways you can, there's lots of different ways you can participate here on Zoom. Um, if we go to gallery view for just a moment, uh, I know a lot of you guys, this is not your first class that you've had with us. Show me how you raise your hand when we're doing school on Zoom. How do we raise our hand here? We, right, put your hand right in front of the camera and you wave it back and forth just like that. That way I can see when you have a question or when you wanna participate. Thank you, everybody. Or if you are, um, we're, you're muted right now, but we can, we will give you guys the capability to unmute yourselves so that if you have a question and you raised your hand and I didn't see you, feel free to unmute yourselves so that uh, we can hear your question or your comment. Um, also, because we're here on Zoom and because people are seeing us out on Facebook on Zoom, mostly they're going to be seeing me, but sometimes, especially when we spotlight your video, other people will see you guys too. So can you guys show me if you like something that you see here that I'm doing or you like something that somebody else is showing you? Show me how you could show me with your body or your face that you like something somebody else has done. What could you do? You could do a thumbs up. Sigurd found the... Uh, the emoji, there's reactions on the very bottom of your Zoom screen. Yeah, how else could you show me that you like something that somebody did? You could do some, uh, you could show us your clapping. Don't clap down here because we can't see it. Clap up here so we can see it. Very nice, Sophie. I love that. You could do a round of applause. That would be good too. Any of those would be awesome. But I'd also love for you guys to introduce yourselves, a couple of you, if you wouldn't mind. So I want you to say just your first name, not your last name, just your first name. And don't tell us where you are because we want to keep everything secure. But tell us your first name and your favorite instrument. That's kind of our icebreaker question for today. So if you'd like to introduce yourself, raise your hand, and I'd love to hear your name and your favorite instrument. Let's go to Connor and Sophia. We're gonna spotlight you guys and you can unmute yourselves so that you know how. There you go. Yeah. Who are you? I'm Connor and my favorite instrument is the cello. Ooh, do you play the cello? Yeah. That's really cool. How about you, Sophia? My name's Sophia, and my favorite instrument is the ukulele. The ukulele? Do you play the ukulele? I used to, but right now I play the bass. Whoa, that's like the opposite stringed instrument. <laughs> I love that. I play a little bit of ukulele very poorly, so I'm glad to meet another ukulele player. That's great. Who else would like to introduce themselves? Raise your hand. Let's go to Sigrid. Go ahead and unmute yourself, Sigrid. My name is Sigrid, and my favorite instrument is a piano. Ooh, I love the piano too. Do you also play the piano or do you just love to listen to it? Yeah, I play the piano. You play it a little bit? That's great. Let's Probably go to going Karis. into my fifth year. Right? Your fifth year playing piano. That's great. Let's go to Karis and we're going to spotlight you. And can you unmute yourself, Karis? There you go. So you can say your name and your favorite instrument. My name is Karis. My favorite <laughs> instrument is the flute. The flute? Do you play the flute? No. No? What do you love about it? I don't know. It just, it's just that I really just like it. Yeah, that I, sometimes we don't know why we like things. We just really like them. That's great. Anybody else want to introduce themselves with their name and their favorite instrument? How about Garrett and Aaron? We'll come down to you guys. We'll spotlight you. You can unmute yourselves. Tell us your names and your favorite instruments. My name is Garrett. My favorite instrument is the drum. Is the drum? What a great drum you have. <laughs> That sounds good. That sounds really good. Do you know what kind of drum that is? I don't know. A hand drum? A hand drum? Yeah. How about you, Aaron? Do you want to share your favorite instrument as well? I'm Aaron, and my favorite instrument is the acoustic guitar. The acoustic guitar. Do you play it? No, but I like listening to it. What's I do too. Guitar? 
<laughs> well, thank you guys so much for introducing yourselves. Does anybody else want to introduce themselves that didn't get a chance to? No? All right. Okay, so if anybody else does, just let me know. We can we can uh, introduce you to everybody who's watching on Facebook. And like Matt said, um, those people who are here on Zoom, I can see them and hear them, and you guys can type things to me in the chat window too if you want. But even if you're watching on Facebook, you can leave comments on Facebook, and we will see them live, and Matt will let me know when we have a comment, and he will let us know that we should um, check Facebook for a comment. So That's right. There you go. We can participate in lots of ways. So we are doing a pretty fun and kind of different project today. And I'm excited to try this out, especially because we've got so many people who are coming back for not just their first class or their second class, but they've been here for a couple classes. So I'm glad that you guys are here because this is our little project today. This guy's called a tiny drummer and it's a, a really simple hummingbird project. It's got a base piece of cardboard down here. It's got a piece of cardboard that goes up and down and it's got some stabilizer pieces on the back here called a bracket and then the drummer part is just a craft stick banging on a paper cup so I know that there are a few people who are here today who are joining the webinar today who have hummingbirds at home and if you have a hummingbird at home you can build this tiny drummer and let me show you where to find your tiny drummer um, a great tutorial on how to build a tiny drummer, okay? So I'm gonna go over here to the internet, the World Wide Web, and I'm gonna go to birdbraintechnologies.com, and I wanna show you where you can build your own tiny drummer. So I'll go to our split screen here so things don't look so crazy. I'm gonna go to the at home page, and then I'm gonna go to uh, let's see, Hummingbird at Home, I think? Yeah, there we go, Hummingbird at Home. And see, there's one that says Tiny Drummer. And if you click on that, that takes you to a little video series hello, that we made. Hello. There's me, um, in a slightly different studio with slightly different hair. And, um, and we take you through, step by step, how to build a Tiny Drummer project, and we show you a couple different variations on it. So if you're wanting to build a Tiny Drummer at home, you can check that piece, on, uh, the, that video series out on our website, and you can build it anytime you want. You can build it here during class, or you can build it later on as well. But since we have that video series already made, and also because I know everybody tuning in doesn't have a hummingbird, I thought that we could do something a little bit different today. Um, we'd take this basic design of a tiny drummer, which is meant to, again, drum, you can kind of hear it, on a cup. And I thought we could take that design, I'm gonna back it up a little bit, because I wanna get this guy to drum on some water cups instead. So here's my cups of water, and I've got different amounts of water in them. This one has a little bit more, this one has a little bit less. Have you guys ever done this? Have you ever banged on a cup with a, a pencil or a spoon or something like that and heard the different sounds that it can make? Raise your hand if you've ever done that before, banged on a cup with a spoon or something. Yeah, okay. So what I thought we could do is we could t turn our tiny drummer project into a tiny percussionist project. So raise your hand if, if you know what a percussionist is. What is a percussionist? Does anybody know? That's okay. You can tell us, Garrett. I'd love to hear from you because you have one of those things there. We're gonna go. We're gonna spotlight you, Garrett. What is what is a percussionist? What does that mean? Can you guys unmute yourselves and tell us what you think that means? Bang on drums. There we go. You bang on drums. They bang on drums. That's one thing that a percussionist does. Does anybody know anything else that a percussionist does? They bang on drums. What else can they do? Let's go to Sigrid, and then we're going to go up to Connor and Sophia. They might have something to add. What else does a percussionist do, Sigrid? They play the triangle. They play the xylophone. They play the gong and a bunch of other things. Yeah, so a gong, so the a beat. triangle. A xylophone, oh those are all different instruments they play. Sophia and Connor, do you know any other instruments a percussionist plays? Or do you want to tell us something about any of those instruments? An instrument. What is that? An instrument. Um, cymbals, that. Cymbals, the cymbal. Yeah. Exactly. That's another type of percussion instrument. Exactly. So I thought we could take a look 
at some different, um, specifically some percussion instruments. Now things like a drum, a drum kind of has just a few different sounds that it can make. If you bang on the middle of a drum, it makes a sound. If you bang on the outside of a drum, it makes a sound. But something like, um, Secret mentioned a xylophone, that is a percussion instrument that can make a bunch of different sounds and a bunch of different notes. Percussion just means to hit something. To, um, to, be per to percuss something means to hit it, and percussion instruments are played by hitting them. So um, xylophones, drums, cymbals that crash like this, um, or cymbals on a drum kit that are, that are high up like that, those are all percussion instruments. Even technically a piano, the way a piano works, because it's a little mallet hitting a string, even that technically is a stringed percussion instrument as well. It's kind of a hybrid. Um, so I thought it might be cool, actually, to take a look at um, some of the, uh, one of the percussion instruments that I found a pretty cool video of a percussion instrument that I thought it might be cool to share with you guys. Um, so I'm gonna pull up this video and we can take a look at it. Ooh, go over here. Wow. And I'll, okay. let's see, can we turn it way up, Matt? Yeah. There we go. song that's like a that's like a super crazy xylophone song there's so many notes he's playing did you guys see what he had in his hands he didn't just have one mallet in each hand he had like two mallets he was playing he could play four notes at the same time that was pretty awesome pretty yeah that was uh Karis was doing a great impression of what he was doing blah, 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 blah. yeah that was great so <laughs> so um that's an example of a percussion instrument that when you hit different parts of it it plays different notes so i thought that we could kind of do the same thing and similarly when we did our um our rover activity we took a rover that i had built and we wanted to change it so i thought we could kind of do the same thing here we could use the engineering design process here to ask, imagine, plan, create, and test ways to change this tiny drummer into something that could play this water glass, okay? And then we're gonna give you guys a chance to code it and we've got another one kind of sitting off to the side and we're gonna ask and see if you guys can play a whole song using robots to play water glasses. That's our big idea. How does that sound? Give me a thumbs up if that sounds pretty dope. Okay, we also thought that that sounded pretty dope, but we haven't tried it. So you guys are gonna try it with us, okay? So here we go. First things first, we have to ask, um, I, think, I think actually the first thing we wanna do is we wanna ask, I'll put this up kind of behind it here. We wanna ask what's the best way and what's the best thing to hit a water glass with? So I've got a bunch of different supplies here that I can try hitting these water glasses with. I'm gonna put them so we can see them both. There we go, that's pretty good. Do, 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 do. There, that's good, that's good. Okay, so they're both on my camera here. And I've got a bunch of different things that we could try hitting a water glass with. Let me go to gallery view and raise your hand. And you guys could also do this at home if you wanted to collect some water glasses, not the pretty ones, the, the ugly water glasses, not your mom's favorite or not your dad's special ones, but the other water glasses in your house. What do you think? Secret's got a suggestion. What do you think we should try to hit these with? I think paper clips. Let's try it. I'm gonna grab some paper clips. And, you know and if you have a knitting needle at home, probably it would work. Well, that also. might be good too. So, all right, so here's my paper clips here. Um, should I leave them folded up or should I unfold them to hit it with it? Unfold them. Okay, so I'm gonna unfold this paper clip here. This is a good idea. Okay, eh, I just cut my nails this morning, so that's harder than it looks. Okay, so, and then where should I hit it? Should I hit it on the top or should I hit it on the side? On the side. 
It's not very loud. Your other suggestion was a knitting needle. Let me try that one. Okay. Here's a knitting needle. Now I have metal knitting needles, so I gotta hit it real gently. I'm gonna hit it on the side. Can you guys hear that? That was pretty good. What other suggestions do you guys have? What else should I try? Let's go back to gallery view or let's go to, uh, it looks like Garrett might have a suggestion. What's your suggestion, Garrett? What else could I hit it with and where could I hit it too? What do you think, Garrett? Um, maybe a pencil. Let me try a pencil. Let's go back here. I got a pencil right here. Should I hit it on the side or should I hit it on the top? What do you think, Garrett? The side. Ooh. That's even louder than the knitting needle. Can you guys hear the difference between the knitting needle and the pencil? All right, yeah. I'm gonna try hitting it on the top as well. Oh, that doesn't work quite as well. Your idea was better, Garrett. The side was better. Okay, what do you guys think, Connor and Sophia? What else should I try? We've tried a knitting needle, a pencil, and a paper clip. A ping pong ball. Ooh, let me go grab a ping pong ball. What a great idea. A ping pong ball. For the little ball. I'm really going to need your help because your little I don't know how am I going to hit this ping pong ball on there? Just like tapping it on the side? Uh, yeah. Ooh, I can barely hear it. I feel like my fingers are like dampening the sound. You could also try craft sticks. Okay. Let me try craft sticks. I love this. This is really cool. Okay. Should I do um should I do a skinny craft stick or a or a wide craft stick? What should I do, Connor? A skinny one. Okay. On the side again? Yeah. That's pretty good. Let me try the fat one too. I I have a better grip on this one. There's more to hold on to, so I think it's actually that I can hold it a little better. I think the I think the the wide one makes a louder sound, but Garrett's suggestion to hit it on the side. Oh, it looks like I drew a, a smiley face on this one at some point. Wonder what that was for. <laughs> All right. Ooh, uh, Karis, looks like you've got some craft sticks too. Can we take a look at what you've got there? What do you have? Oh, those are colorful craft sticks. Those are cool. So, do you have some glasses at your house that you're trying to trying to tap on, Karis? Um, I think I tapped some, some before. You think you tapped some before? Well, yeah. if you, if you, if it's okay with your, with your family, if you want to go grab some, you can do that too. Yeah, we'll I be have, here. I, I have a mug. Ooh, how does it sound? Can you tap your craft sticks on that mug? Kind of put it down on there and then tap around and see how the different, we'll listen. You can hear it a little bit. It's really quiet. Hmm. Can you guys hear, are you tapping it on the side or on the top? Side. On the side. Ooh, I. That's pretty good. Does anybody else have some things that they're tapping on? Looks like Sigurd might have a couple. Let's go see what Sigurd's tapping on. I want to see what you guys are tapping on and how it sounds. So, um, I have a knitting needle. I have a knitting kit, so. <laughs> nice. It has all the different sizes. Yeah. I think the smallest one will work the best. Let's find out. Yeah. Ooh, making some beautiful music, Sigrid. Now, do, did you tell me, I think I remember before, do your knitting needles also have little balls on the end of them? Um, no. Oh, okay. Some, I think somebody's did. Um, but yeah, if you've got, if it had like a ball on the, on the end of it here, that might be kind of fun to try too. Looks like Charlie, or I'm sorry, Connor and Sophia had another suggestion too. We'll take one more suggestion as we're as we're imagining some different things that we could hit it with. What else should we try, you guys? Ooh, you guys have a cup you're gonna bang on. Show us that, Connor and Sophia. Yeah. Um, it's a chopstick. Ooh. Right yeah. Here. That sounds good. I like the sound of that. I, you know, I haven't tried a chopstick le yet. Let me. We've been eating a lot of um, Thai food here at the Bird Brain Studio, so I've got some chopsticks handy. Ooh. Yeah, hitting it on the side. Hitting it on the top does okay with the chopstick. I think the pencil was actually 
our most successful one. I wonder, the, it seems like the wooden chopstick and then the wooden pencil, those have been our two, and then this wooden wide craft stick. These were our most successful things. Does anybody have a, a hypothesis or an idea? Why were these three things our most successful? And why was the pencil the most successful of the wooden things? What do you think, Karis? Let's go to you. Why do you think these were successful? I think these were successful because they're all wood. Maybe it's because of what they were made of? Yeah. Why do you think the pencil was the most successful wood thing? I don't know. I don't know either. That's a really good question. Does anybody have any ideas? What do you think, Garrett? Why do you think the pencil was the most successful wood thing? Because it's it like has something on the outside and something on the inside and it's like it's like strong wood. That's it. That's a good idea. So Garrett was thinking that the pencil, if we look really close at it, it's got lead on the inside, it's got wood on the inside, and then it's got this painting, this painted coating. So maybe the coating or the lead has something to do with it. Those are all great ideas. Let's go to Connor and Sophia. They'll have our last hypothesis here. We don't know. We can't exactly test I, it. A great question. I, I think it. I think the pencil. It works the best because it's the heaviest and it has the most wood on it. It might be because it's got the most wood. Maybe there's something about the wood that kind of resonates. And yeah, I can tell you just in my hands, like the, the pencil is the heaviest. So maybe it's got the most sort of weight behind it. Okay, we got to move on to our next step though. So we asked what things made some good sounds. We imagined some different things. We tried it out. We kind of, there wasn't much planning. We just did it. There wasn't much creating, we just did it, but we tested it, right? And it sounds like the pencil was the thing that made the best sound. So we're going to go with a pencil. And now the next thing we've got to ask ourselves is, and I'll, I'll switch my camera view here so you can see the problem. Here's the problem, friends. There's my little drummer. Oh, here, I'll move him on camera. There's my little drummer, and here's my two wine glasses. Well, water glasses at this point. And it's not... He can't reach up there. So our second task, our thing that we have to engineer is, how do we get the tiny drummer to be able to bang on the water glasses? Let me ask you guys, let's imagine some different ways. So let's go to gallery view. What do you guys think? What are some ways that we could get the tiny drummer to reach the glasses? Let's go to, let's go to Connor and Sophia. Looks like they might have a, a suggestion. What do you guys think? So I think that you can make the body taller and then move the arm up so it could um, reach the top of the glass. Totally. I have got some bigger cardboard here so I could remake, I could remake my tiny drummer into a moderately sized drummer instead of a tiny drummer. <laughs> I could make him into a, a medium drummer and uh, uh, it, that could move the arms up so that the arms aren't down here, the arms could be up here. What else do you think, Karis? What, what else could we do to help the drummer reach the, the wine glasses? I think you should extend the arm. We could make longer arms too. I think um, the, the, we're gonna actually accomplish that because the, the arm here is like half of a craft stick and the pencil is definitely longer than that. So we are absolutely gonna do that, Karis. That's a great idea. Let's go to one last imagine from Garrett. What do you think, Garrett? What, what else could we change about our design here to make the drummer able to reach the water glasses? Maybe you could like tip the glass? I could tip the glass. I have, a, I have a thing that I think will be a problem about that though. Does anybody else have any reasons why tipping the glass might be a problem? Why do you think it'll be a problem, Sophia? <laughs> do you know why it'll be a problem, Garrett? Do you know why it'll be a problem? Why will, why will it be a problem to tip this glass? Because it might spill. Yeah, and I've got robots on my table and I really don't want to get them wet. <laughs> We're already playing with, well, the opposite of fire here. So <laughs> we, don't want to, we don't want to tip the water out and spill it on our, on our thing. So I think we've got two good solutions here, which is that we're going to make a bigger body for our drummer and we're going to make longer arms. So let's uh, work on that solution right now. All right. So, and while I'm doing that, I would love to go to Elise and Kat, because I think they've been working on something. Have you been working on something, Elise and Kat? Would you like to show? Oh. Yeah. What you been doing? Show your hands. <laughs> 
look at your tiny drummer. Oh my gosh. Can you tell us about your design here? It's so good. Very nice. So that, I love that. That's all, um, it looks like you, you did that um, with all tape. You didn't use hot glue the way a lot of our uh, instructions had suggested. Uh, and you had a lot of success with tape. Yeah, it might not last too long, but. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, nothing ever does, right? So um, I also love something that is way cool about your tiny drummer is like the design of it. Like your tiny drummer uh, actually like looks like a person. Our tiny drummer kind of looks like a rectangle, which some people are rectangle shaped, but most people are people shaped. <laughs> So I love that your tiny drummer looks like a person. I've actually been hoping that somebody would see our design and say, I can do better than that. And they would, they would do what you're doing, but I haven't ever seen anybody do that. Um, Elise and Kat. So I'm really impressed. Now, can you show us the arm, the arm that's doing the drumming? What's that made out of? Um, a popsicle stick and cardboard for the hand that is great so a little bit of cardboard on the end for the hand but a popsicle stick for the arm that is great so i'm looking at my original drummer here and i'm seeing that there's here's my tiny drummer here's my medium-sized drummer <laughs> it's getting real big i see aaron and garrett gave you guys a round of applause actually can we go to um can we go to a gallery view and what do you guys think? Can you show us? What do you think of Kat and Elise's tiny drummer? Show us how you feel about that. Very nice. It's turning out great, you guys. Very good. Um, so I'm going to need to grab my hot glue gun. I'm going to go grab that and hot glue my drummer together. And could you help me by plugging this back in, Matt, once I get it up where it needs to go? You bet. Oh, well, thank you. Okay. I've got my hot glue gun. I've got my vertical piece and my horizontal piece. So now I'm gonna kind of put this towards the front. There's some hot glue. There's some hot glue. And there's some hot glue. A little more. Too much hot glue is only sometimes a problem. So, okay. There's that and there's that. I'll show you what that looks like from the top now. So I've got my, um, does any, has anybody watched our stuff? And do you know what this triangle piece that I'm hot gluing this onto right now? Do you know what that's called? Raise your hand if you know what this triangle piece is called. Does anybody know? It's called a bracket. And the bracket is what's going to keep my tiny drummer from uh, falling over. Um, it looks like Secret is working on a song. Can we hear the song that you're working on? Oh, look what you're doing. Yeah, what are, tell us, tell us what you're doing right now, Secret. What are you doing? I'm using this to uh, pipette the water little by little to get the right notes. Whoa, are you thinking of a particular song that you would like to play? Yeah, I finished it now. So. Oh, do you want to play us a song? Sure. <laughs> did you guys hear the song? Oh, did you guys hear the song that she played? It was really quiet, but I heard it. Sigurd, what song were you playing? Mary Had a Little Lamb. Oh my gosh, you genius person. That is amazing. That is actually the same idea that we have. <laughs> so you gave a great preview. When we add our drummer to our other drummer over there, we thought we'd play Mary Had a Little Lamb. <laughs> so you just, you, uh, you showed everybody how. It's a good song because it only has three notes. Yeah, it's a it's a good song. I mean, like number one, it's a as they as they say in the music biz, it's a banger. Like it's a it's a rock out sort of, sort of song. It's a classic. You know? It's a classic, right? Um, but then also, 
It's really easy because it's only got three or four notes. Karis has something she'd like to say. What would you like to say, Karis? I can play Mary Had a Little Lamb on my keyboard. You can? That's awesome. That is great. So what I'm doing here now, I'm looking on the back of, I've got my, my drummer. It doesn't have a face yet, but I've got my drummer. And I'm going to go ahead and put the motors on the back. And I think Karis's suggestion, or somebody's, maybe it was Sophia's, Sophia's suggestion was to put the arms up higher. So I'm going to put the arms up here and up here. And I'm just going to put a little, a little dab of glue on each of those to stick it on there. So if you're wondering at home, oh my gosh, what is she doing? She's gluing onto a robot. How will she, she must have so many robot pieces. She's only going to use this once. Nah, I'm going to reuse it over and over and over again. And I'm just going to, when I'm done with it, I'm just going to peel off the hot glue. So there's my piece that I just hot glued on there. And you can actually see that there's some hot glue left over from whatever we were doing to this before. But guess what? It doesn't matter because I'm just going to put more hot glue on it. So um, that is something that I love about hummingbirds is that they are super easy to make and remake and remake and remake with, even with something as robust as hot glue. And as that glue is drying, it looks like Connor and Sophia had a question. Oh, yeah. Connor and Sophia, what you got? Uh, I to, For your tiny drummer, I think... If you want to hit the side of the glass, you can just mm. turn your your motor so it to a different angle, and so it goes this way instead of up and down. You are so right, Connor. That is something that we figured out early on that I totally just forgot about our design. Our original design went up and down, and so that's what I decided to have it do. But we figured out that it hits the glass better if you go side to side. So here's what I'm going to do to one of our one of our motors. Now we'll have to figure out how to get it to go side and side. I'm also looking at the time a little bit and the time is telling me so it's 2:38 and we've only got till three o'clock. I may not have time to re-engineer how to do this, but when you do it at home, I bet that you could figure out how to take your motors that are this way and lay them down this way so that it can drum like this. It'll look silly, right? But it'll sound better. So that's really, that's a really good point, Connor. I'm making it the not as good way, <laughs> but it's the quicker way. So thank you. Who else had, I think Sigrid's had something that she wanted to say. If some people didn't hear it very well, I found a way to make it louder. Oh, how did you make it louder? With a thicker knitting needle. Ah, so that's something that we discovered too. The thicker the mallet uh, or the hitting thing, the louder it is. Do you want to play it again for us? Sure. All right. That is awesome. Nice job, Sigrid. Yeah, so we that's something that we discovered earlier that you just put into practice, which is the thicker your mallet or the thicker your, your hitting device, um, the better the sound, the louder the sound is. So what I'm doing now is I am attaching my pencils. I'm taping my pencils onto the servo horns that are going to go on the ends of my motors. So the motors are going to go on here. And I'm just taping that on. I really like this servo horn that has two wings on it, like so. Um, I think that's uh, a, a really easy one to attach on because you can just put tape on at two different points and then it's also really easy to take apart. Um, which in my line of work, I have to take apart just as many robots as I build. <laughs> Fun fact. Okay, so now I'm going to put these back on. I'm just going to snap them back on and snap them back on. There we go. And so now they should be able to, oh, there we go. Oh, I put it on backwards. I can fix that. Snap it off. Put it back on this way. There we go. Okay. All right. So now I've got these two things that are going up and down. Oh, you know what? Oh no. I made them. <laughs> I made them too tall. Look at that. 
<laughs> oh no! Oh no! It doesn't reach at all. <laughs> what a silly mistake to make. Okay, this is easy. I can just put the motors down lower. And this time, guess what, friends? This That's time, I'll measure. I was trying to tell you they were too tall. Oh, who was trying to tell me that? Oh, thanks, Garrett. Garrett. Thanks, Garrett. I should have had my listening ears on better. Okay, now I'm measuring it out, and I'm actually going to... There we go. When I made my last one, I didn't measure it, and it worked out fine. So I thought I wouldn't have to measure this one either, but turns out I'm only brilliant once a day. So, okay. There we go. <laughs> okay. So now I'll get this one on at about the same height because they're the same style of glasses. Okay. Easy enough to you fix. You should have measured them to see how high they were going to go first. I should have. Uh, my grandpa always taught me to measure twice and cut once. In this case, it would be measure twice, glue once. Because um, you only get to make a cut on something one time. So you should measure it really carefully before you do that. Okay, so now I'm going to plug in my motors. And Matt, could you help us connect to this robot through Bluetooth? You bet. Okay. So Matt is going to help us out with something which is that he's going to help us connect our robot to our computer so that we can program it. And we figured out an even easier way to get you guys at home to program. So especially if you're in a house right now that doesn't have a homing bird, we would love to let you guys program. And the way that we've figured out to do that is we are going to, ooh, <laughs> it moved, it connected. <laughs> uh, we're gonna actually use this feature that Zoom has called remote control. And remote control lets you control our computer remotely. Um, so like you, you know, you could go to a website, you could do this with your teachers and you could do remote coding with a teacher. The teacher could set something up and then you could code remotely on their thing. Or even like uh, playing a game that's on someone else's computer, you could do that. Um, so while Matt finishes setting that up, I'm going to draw a face on this drummer. I need you guys' help, though. What expression should this drummer have on its face? I'm going to go to gallery view, and you guys can let me know. Raise your hand if you have a suggestion. Should this drummer be happy? Should this drummer be surprised? Should this drummer be angry? What's your suggestion, Karis? I think it should be excited excited all right what do you think Seagrid? and then we'll go to garrett what do you think Seagrid? what should it what expression should it have it should be confused confused okay <laughs> i like confused what do you think that garrett? the glasses make you sound uh what that the glasses make a sound what do you think the expression should be garrett are you gonna put me like on this on this oh yeah we can make you big it's a little <laughs> Matt, there you go. Thanks, Matt. <laughs> He's like, I know how this works. I'm supposed to be big right now. Thanks, Garrett. <laughs> okay. So what expression? What's your suggestion? What should the face of our tiny drummer robot look like? What expression should it have on its face? Oh, that's a good expression. A big old smile. I like that. <laughs> that's pretty great. Uh, okay. Uh, we've got one more suggestion from Connor and Sophia. What do you think the drummer's expression should look like? I think it should be like tired. Tired? Okay, so we've got excited, confused, tired, and a big old smile was what Garrett's suggestion was. Okay, uh, this is also relying on my drawing skills, which are, you know, they're okay. <laughs> Let me go to you, Karis, too. Do you have a suggestion for what its face should look like? Let me go to you. I think we should give it a name. Ah, I think we should give it a name, too. What do you think its name should be? I don't know. Hmm. Let me go to gallery view. And I'm just going to keep it on gallery view so that um, as you guys are discussing what it should look like, we can, uh, um, we can do that together. What do you guys think its name should be? You can unmute yourselves. Just, just shout it out. What do you think, Sigrid? Carl. Carl. I like Carl. Carl with a C or Carl with a K? That's with important. A C. With a C. All right. What do you guys think, Connor and Sophia? What should its name be? Bob. Bob is a good one. We did have a robot the other day that was um, Robert Charles James the Third, I think. And so it was um, Charlie Bobby Jimmy, which was a good name for a robot, I think. 
Uh, what do you think, Garrett? What should its name be? Um. Joe What is it? Joe Beetle. Joe what? Joe Beetle. Yeah. Joe Beetle. That's pretty cool. Well, I, I think I'm going to make this robot a, a lady robot, actually. Not that all ladies have eyelashes, but I'm going to make my robot a, a confused. So I'm taking multiple suggestions here. Uh, I'm incorporating some confused eyeballs from Garrett. I'm incorporating, I wanted to give it eyelashes, it's just for me, and this sort of, um, um, this isn't what you're smi- oh no, who said confused? I forget who said confused. Oh, Sigurd said confused. So Sigurd's confused eyeballs, Garrett's big goofy smile that I like so much, <laughs> and then some eyelashes that I, that I just kind of added for me. So what are, what are some like, um, what are some names that we could, we could name, now that it's got a face, what should its name be? Any thoughts? There it is. Okay, I'll line it up with the glasses, Matt, so you can start to oh, start to get those angles. What do you think, Connor and Sophia? What should its name be now that it has a face? Oh, Diddly Bob. Diddly Bob. <laughs> I like. Uh, I like because also that's like it's a it's a it's a. Ooh, there we go. It's starting to move a little bit. It's starting to. That kind of sounds like a, a drumming sound. All right, all right. What else? What do you think, Kat and Elise? Do you have a suggestion for its name? Or do you want to show off your drummer? Um, Millie. Lily? Millie. Millie. I like Millie, too. That's a funny name. I think, I think I'm going to go with Millie. I think her name is Millie the Percussionist. And I think that she is uh, just about ready to drum. Matt's helping us figure out what her angles are going to be. Because we just made her live, so he's coding it live here. Ooh, there we go. I think it hit. Yeah. All right. I can move it up a little bit. Now it's really going to hit. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, ooh, there we go. Can you guys hear it? It's kind of quiet, but you can kind of hear it. <laughs> Connor and Sophia, yeah. Uh, Connor wants to show you something. Oh. What is it, Connor? I, I, I kind of figured out how to get it to go from the side. Oh. It doesn't really. It looks a little weird, but I guess it it could be like it's it's. Yeah. Like, if I cut this a little, that. it could be well, like. It, like sleeve or something yeah or so you kind of cut into the cardboard that is such a great design connor so that it can hit from the side that is so smart so that because we figured out that hitting from the side is actually louder than hitting from the top so when you guys program yours yours will be even louder than mine is that's so smart uh can we give a giant stupendous non-verbal round of applause to Connor for that awesome design. Way to go. Yeah. That is a really that is a really awesome design. All right. Do we have both of these programmed now? I think we're about ready. I think we got them. Okay. So if I go back to this one. Um, so what we're going to do is Matt. Do you guys see? If you go to gallery view, can you guys see that Matt C is uh, he's sharing his screen now? So he's showing you what these two different... Um, uh, codes that he's built are. So what does one do, Matt? Uh, when I press the number one, uh, one of the servos goes from angle 80 to angle 90 with a 0.1 second wait. So not a very long wait. But when I hit uh, the number two, <laughs> the other servo goes from position 85 to position 105 with a 0.1 second wait. So it doesn't wait very long. You can see that it just stays down for a very short amount of time. Yeah, that is great. So um, so we've just programmed our this robot to hit two different, to hit the two different cups and two different notes. And Matt, were you also programming our other robot too? Uh, that one is programmed as well, yes. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do, my friends. Can you stop sharing your screen or can I end your screen share? I will end it right now. Okay. 
So I'm going to spotlight myself because we have uh, not just this robot, but we have another robot that I'm going to go plug in over there so that we can play a song. So let me show you our other robot. There it is. So we've got an, another robot, and I'm going to bring my, bring my robot to over here. There we go. Put it in the shot. So we've got two percussion robots here. One and two. Great. I'm going to plug this one in. And we'll just have to guess which right. goes to which. <laughs> right. So I'm going to plug this one in over here. Do, 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 do. Oh, let's see. Am I plugging? Which one am I doing, Matt? Am I plugging into the first one or the second one? You're going to plug into uh, ah, I see, I see. Astounding Lemur. <laughs> okay. Or Ooh, copper one. Yeah. Okay. This is the fun part that I was talking about, guys, that we hadn't tried this before yet. We're going to all try it live. Okay. So I'm plugging the two motors from this guy. Do, 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 do. So this one is two. There we go. <laughs> and this one is one. So I'm going to turn off the other one so it goes away. So we know that we're all plugged into that one. Now i got to go get water glasses. Because... Right. Give me one second. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. Change the spike marks here. Okay. Change the spike marks here. Line it up. There we go. The two drummers. And I'll put some notes on that one as well. So there's F, G, A, and C. So if I take a different pencil, do we need to switch our microphone so they can hear it? Uh, it should be coming through okay. this particular computer. Let me know. If you guys uh, can hear this. Give me one second. Oh, sure. <laughs> I was going to do it with just a pencil. Ah, uh, uh, please. Uh, on my own. So let me know if you guys can hear this, okay? So is this going to be coming through your computer, Matt? Uh, this will be coming from through my audio, yes. Okay, and you're unmuted? <laughs> Sorry, man. That's okay. So Matt's going to unmute himself on Zoom so we can hear the audio. I can unmute you, actually. Excellent. Excellent. Sorry. I muted myself, so now that shouldn't be a problem. There's something uh, to think about. Okay. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm going to come I need it. Okay. <laughs> and unmute myself. Okay. So, did you guys hear that at all? <laughs> Nope. <laughs> Fun. We're, we're messing with like three different microphones at the same time. Yeah. Um, but uh, we, we actually, I don't know if you guys can stick around past three o'clock to try out the live coding, but I know we started a couple minutes late. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to share, like Matt is going to let you guys, Matt is going to have you guys remote into his, um, his computer and one of you guys is going to get the ability to control the robots from his computer. And so you're going to just, uh, it's a lot easier than doing the whole Nets Blocks thing. Um, there's some things that Nets Blocks can do that, that this way that we're doing it can't do. Um, but uh, Matt's just finishing getting that coding all set up and ready to go. I, uh, yeah? Um, could you go to a top-down shot? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, um, 
Now we're on to this last piece here. We have asked, we have imagined, we have planned, we have created, we have tested. So we have a robot that totally drums on its own, um, that totally drums on its own um, cups. But what we got to do now is we've got to get all, so we've got four motors plugged into one hummingbird. So there's motor one, two, three, and four. And I think they go in order. So I think F is going to be one, G is going to be two, A is going to be three, and C is going to be four. And you're going to initiate it, I believe, with even the key presses, one, two, three, and four on your keyboard. So that's how you're going to play it. So you might practice on your keyboard right now. How do you play Mary Had a Little Lamb? I'll give you a hint. It starts on three. Three, two, one, two, three, 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 two, 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 three, four, four. Three, two, one, two, three, 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 and two, two, three, two, one. You can kind of practice that with your fingers right now. Yeah. <laughs> Did anybody else get any um, water glasses around? It looks like um, uh, our friend Joanne, who is whoever is coming in from Joanne's iPad, has some water glasses that they are maybe getting ready to play. Oh, and it looks like Kat and Elise, you guys have your drummer that's set up with your two arms. I think we may, we, what we may do with Tiny Drummer is we've, we've trouble, we've troubleshot um, this guy over here, our, our one on the left. We've made that one, but we may not have time to do the remote coding part today. Um, so we may not have time to do that part today because we, we, um, had this really cool idea last night and then didn't have time to test it today <laughs> before we started. Um, but Kat and Elise, could we perhaps go out on looking at your drummer and seeing how it all came together? I'll come spotlight you guys. I also love that you guys made drums out of, are those medicine bottles? Yeah, Kat made it out using a prescription bottle and a juice cap. That's great. And a juice cap. That looks great. Have you guys gotten yours? Have you guys tried programming it yet? Yeah, this is the first time using this humming, the, our hummingbird. Oh, so wow. I'm just now connecting it and transferring it. But we have the. You got them all plugged in back there. You've got the two little micro servo motors. Cool. And you got those plugged into your hummingbird. Yeah, so we have it plugged into our hummingbird. Great. Yeah. And what are you guys using to program with? Are you using a computer or are you using an iPad? It's a laptop. So we have oh. the make, make code up. Cool. Yeah. So they are, um, if I come back here, I'll kind of finish us out with a couple places that we can go, that we can go visit so that you guys can do exactly what Elise and Kat are doing, which is, so this will be our kind of outro and then after i do this we'll we'll end our live feed but if we get our remote coding work if anybody wants to stick around and try that out with us if we get it working we'll take a video and we'll post that on facebook as well so um to end us out here um <clears throat> excuse me how Elise and Kat and everybody are learning to program their hummingbirds is that you can go to this website here birdbraintechnologies.com slash robotics at home and you can find some courses there that'll teach you how to program with it. You can also find that Tiny Drummer video series that I talked about. And you can see when all of our next live webinars will be coming up so that you can register for those and you can participate live on here and give us suggestions and build along with us and play Mary Had a Little Lamb on your own glasses at home. Um, but we would also love to see if you guys are experimenting with water glasses once Kat and Elise finish their tiny drummer or if you build a tiny drummer at home, you can tag us on social media on um, Twitter or Instagram or Facebook. You can tag Bird Brain Tech and you can tag Hummingbird Kit. And especially if you make a tiny drummer, you can also tag hashtag tiny drummer to show us your tiny drummer. If you want to, you can tag me too, but um, Bird Brain would love to see what you are up to. Um, and if you have any questions about anything, you can certainly um, email us, info at birdbraintechnologies.com. But the other really cool part of this is that normally hummingbirds and things exist at schools. We, we primarily work with schools, but kids aren't in school right now. They're just at home. So also, if you go to this site, you can purchase a hummingbird or a finch. You can purchase this finch robot, too, if you've heard about that guy. You can purchase those 
um, to have at your home and we will ship for free directly to your house as well. So if you want to get a hummingbird to play with, either you're a teacher or you're a parent and you'd love for your kids to have a chance to do this, um, you can find all of those free resources on our website, come to these free live webinars or purchase a robot to try out at home. So thank you all so much for joining us live on Facebook. This has been a really good time. I'm gonna end our live broadcast here, but if anybody on Zoom wants to stick around for a little bit and ask any questions, you certainly can. Thanks so much, everybody, bye. Thank you so much for joining us today. We can't wait to see what you make on social media. On Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, you can tag at birdbraintech or hashtag hummingbirdkit, or you can even tag me. If you have any questions, be sure to email us, info at birdbraintechnologies.com. We can answer questions about purchasing, about learning, about teaching, and about professional development. If you haven't been there yet, be sure to visit our Robotics at Home page. There, you can purchase a kit for yourself, learn how to use it, and even join one of our upcoming webinars. Until we see you in class, thanks for watching from everyone at Birdbrain Technologies.